me first um, download um, the extension and install it, it presents this settings menu. And you can select UMass Boston from the drop down. So we're already in there. You can download the extension and um, find us. So let's see. I'm going to show you um, many scenarios where this extension can be useful. And we'll be showing about six and maybe seven if we have time. Um, but you'll find that they all have the same principle of bringing the library to where users are. So the first scenario would be a situation where, you know, students being recommended that they use JSTOR for their research, um, but doesn't come, you know, it doesn't come to mind immediately that they would, they have to go to the library to use the library specific link. I mean, why would it? Because it just doesn't seem intuitive. They will intuitively, you know, go Google it. So JSTOR, so they arrive at JSTOR. And then you notice that the Lean Library extension icon turns green, um, showing indicating that there is you know some sort of access related type message, and it and it prov provides this um, neat pop up box. Um, give it the get access button. If you click on it, it presents on um, this menu. I'm sure is very familiar um, to many of you. Um, that's how to get access. And then I log in and now um, it recognizes that I'm from you know, UMass Boston um, and that I have, um, now I have access um, to the, um, the database. So the Lean Library, um, our Lean Library extension um, is set up to recognize the sites that we have subscriptions um, to. So the extension gives you the opportunity to authenticate and access JSTOR through our library subscription and you will find this to be the case with other publisher websites like Project Muse, um, IEEE Explorer, um, Science Direct, and you would get that familiar get access button across all different resources. And what about at the article and book level? Um, the extension looks at the article and book information and searches our umbrella holdings. So you don't need, actually need that JSTOR link to be proxied in, um, to be proxied um, for that to kick in. So let's say someone shares with you this link. It's not pro it has no proxy information. Maybe a colleague, you know, from a different university um, shared this link, um, and then you go to it. And um, since I, I since I, I copied and pasted this link without the proxy information, so it says, you know, have library access. Log in through your library. Um, it it doesn't recognize our UMass um, Boston access yet you will find that you know, there's no download link, you can just save the citation, but you will find that there is this um, familiar um, box that you saw earlier with the UMass um, Boston branding and the, the big prominent um, get access button. You click on it. And um, our, my proxy information was already stored in the browser session, but it sends you to the, pro it makes the link a proxy, so it sends you to the UMass Boston access. It says, you know, access provided by University of Massachusetts Boston up there. And we have our download links right here. And then for items, we have in another database. So let's say someone sends you this link, it has no proxy information, um, doesn't recognize um, UMass Boston because you know, it's, um, it's just a general JSTOR link. And, it's, and um, usually there's a, a pop-up, but my computer is slowing down right now. Uh, let's see, okay. So, so it'll show um, this sort of pop-up, letting you know that the article is available um, in a different location. Um, so when you click get access, um, you, when you click the access article, you're brought to a different website and um, it informs you so that you're not surprised um, when that happens. So you're brought to our access um, in, uh, we have access to this um, content in our Project Muse subscription. So as you can see, um, the extension allows us to bring um, umbrella and our resources to um, the user, even when they're not coming, you know, from the from the library. They're not thinking about the library at the moment, um, but then this pop up, you know, 
comes up to let them know, hey, by the way, you know, we have this. And then when users are proxied in um, and they're they're keeping at this year, when they're proxied in with the easy proxy in the URL and they click around, um, they're signed in for the entire browser session. And another um, situation um, where this um, uh, lean library extension can be very useful is with Google Scholar. So as you know, there is a process um, to get Google Scholar set up with um, UMass Boston. Um, there's an entire libguide with instructions. It's like multiple steps. You would usually have to go to settings, um, library links, and then look up UMass Boston, um, and then set that up, um, save that into Google Scholar. But if you have the Lean Library extension um, installed, you actually don't have to do any of that. So let me run a search. That. So you'll see that it shows the find it at umbrella links. Usually, usually you would, without the extension, you won't get those links unless you set up the um, UMass Boston through that multi-step process I showed earlier. But for if you have the extension installed, it just it just um, automatically integrates um, with um, Google Scholar. So you have that link, and then you can click, and then once um, it recognizes that there's access um, in the various, you have access to it in Umbrella, it'll present the find it in Umbrella link. So it saves a lot of um, sort of setup and sa saves having to reference those instructions on a guide that's only on our website. Um, um, similarly to um, Google Scholar, you can get PubMed to recognize your institutional options without having to go to the databases list for the UMB specific PubMed URL. You can just go to PubMed. And oh, I spelled diabetes wrong. Yeah, and then, you know, it presents our um, umbrella option uh, right here. And then there's also um, another option up here um, that usually shows up, but I, my computer is I'm slowing down right now. Okay, yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, the pop-up, yeah, okay. So yeah, so you can access the article. So it does the same thing as this button, but it presents a consistent experience. Um, you know, users know that the pop-up shows up on the top right, right, and there's a button. And uh, another sort of situation number four would be when you sort of look up a book on Amazon, you can actually be brought to our, uh, if we have access to the book, you'll be brought, you'll be suggested that, um, you know, we actually have this, a copy of this book in our library. So this is um, provided that the information on our Amazon page um, you know, sort of correlates to what we have in our umbrella um, record. So I know for sure, like we, I think can, we don't have um, the Kindle information in our um, umbrella record, but let's say hardcover it has the, it matches on the, I think ISBN. Mm. And it shows you that, hey, you know, by the way, while you're looking at this book, did you know, you know, the library has access to this? Um, you may want to check it out. <laughs> so you can click on it. And it brings you to the full text um, of the book. Um, you can even do this with Google too. If you Google um, the accordion in the America, it just pulls on um, the book information. Um, from the page and be like, by the way, you're checking this out, but did you know the library, you can check check out the library's um, ebook copy of it. So again, we're bringing the library to the patron, even when they're not necessarily thinking about it. So a fifth um, situation um, would be 
the um, would be that it would offer a route to into library loan. So when you're on the article and um, it does a search on our holdings and it doesn't find find anything um, because we don't have access to that particular article. it would offer you um, this option to order the article, so through interlibrary loan. So it doesn't leave you hanging with like, well, what did I do? Like if there's no access, um, it offers you the interlibrary loan option. And you get to that familiar screen. This is amazing. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, this is really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, as you can see, um, the information is um, populated to the various fields. Um, the library determined that we didn't have access. So here, we can do IL, you can go to IL. So, it's, it's automatically added? Uh, oh, I, don't, I don't need to type in, right? Yeah, yes, um, the, the information about the book title, the article yeah, title, yeah. Um, ISSN, that's um, pulled from this, this screen. And when you oh. click on it, it pulls it into the so you don't have to uh, type by yourself. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I it works similarly when we have when we're on umbrella. Um, when you click on into our below, it'll try to pull in as much relevant information as possible to pre-populate the Iliad, um, the IL form. That's that's good. Yeah. So um, I guess one another um, great example would be um, we have access to all these like newspapers like Boston Globe, Wall Street Journal, um, New York Times, Discover Magazine. We have access to them, but not through their publisher websites. You actually have to go through our databases, like ProQuest, Gale, yeah. PubSco. Like, yeah, that was really very yeah, uncomfortable to do that. <laughs> yeah. And you can't Google those, you, know, you just can't Google like UMB, you know, Boston Globe access. So, um, so we can actually set up, so when the user sort of, arrives, oh, I already had it here. When a user arrives at bostonglobe.com, um, it'll pop up with a message. It'll be like, hey, by the way, um, you know, Hewlett Library actually has a subscription to this via ProQuest. Do you want to, you know, get access? And then you um, arrive at our ProQuest um, page. Uh, and then, um, so it's, you know, set up to, See, you know, show that you know we actually have access to these things through you know, Healy Library, and that branding, positioning, and button, you know, all familiar to you by now, and it provides that consistent experience. Mm -hmm. So you can do a New York Times, Wall Street Journal, a bunch of things that um, you know you may not think about the library, um, and you may not have to get to the library access from um, from the publishing publisher website. And one quick last thing um, would be um, with this extension, um, you, we can highlight any term on a web page and search the term in umbrella without having to copy and paste and without having to get the you know link, without having to like copy you know the term from one page, find the link to umbrella and then search that link, uh, search that term in umbrella. So I have an example here. So let's say I was looking up um, this condition um, on the Mayo Clinic, you know, doing research. And then I'm scrolling down and I've like come across a term like I'm not familiar with. Let's say this one. I have no idea what this is. So you can actually, if you right click, you'll see that we now have, with the extension installed, oh, wow. we now have this option, search umbrella at Healy Library. <laughs> So, you know, pulls that term, puts it into the umbrella search, and then you can search um, um, information about that. So those are the examples I prepared for you today. There's so many uses um, for this, um, but those are the ones I think um, that would be very useful to you and your students. That's great. Yeah. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm 100% support. But the <laughs> issue is though, what's, what's the cost? How much? Okay. I think you, you change. You, you change. <laughs>
Uh, yes. So there, are, uh, the cost that we we just uh, got a pricing information from the vendor last week. Uh, oh. They have like one time setup fee uh, and uh, an uh, an option of either using a single year subscription or multiple year subscription subscription with substantial discount. I think uh, for one year it's around uh, fourteen. Uh, oh, 14,000 a year for single year subscription and the setup fee is uh 25 uh, 2500 um yeah if um if we do multiple uh year subscription subscription there will be uh more discount okay. and we are we're actually looking into that uh, Paula Ayers who's our assistant dean for administration and finances is looking around to find, see if we can find pockets of funding to get it going, uh, you know, assuming these trials go well and the feedback is, is um, you know, the, the, the product is as um, good as yeah. it's be, that to see if we can get it going pretty immediately, you know, to see if we can find that funding for this fiscal, current fiscal year. Yeah. I think I think this is the one you should take to the faculty council and demonstrate there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's a good, idea. great idea. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm already, you know, I'm already, you know, bought in and you have to buy in and then I'm already, you know, yeah. I'm already hooked. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh, all do this right away, you know, this is active. This is so amazing. <laughs> yeah. How many times I ask in the library room and then they said, oh, son, we have and go there so I can waste the whole, because sometimes when I, you know, search, I'm not sure whether we have that, you know, we have on hold. So I don't have to go, you know, through all the like typing. I have to copy and paste and make sure that I need to write and check again. And then I got email, son, we have already and go there. <laughs> oh, I have some questions. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, so every time when the website uh, uh, direct me or give me the link uh, to, uh, um, to the umbrella, so do I need to enter my uh, user account and password every time um, when I click the link? That's a great question. Uh, uh, we 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 have this single sign on um, for 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 umbrella. So. Um, you only you only need to sign in once when you saw the first time when Louisa signed in, and then uh, as long as you stay in the same, uh, you know, if you open a new tab uh, in uh, open umbrella in a new tab, uh, if you already have a valid session, uh, you don't, you will be you don't need to uh, type in username password anymore. So it will stay active for the entire session. Okay. And another question is, uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, at the user side, so uh, we need to um, download the link library extension, like for the first time when I use it, right? That is, yes, that is correct. Uh, so we're going to, so um, you can download the link library browser plugin can be done, is available for downloading. Uh, I'm going to post uh, EK just put link. the link in the chat. Yeah, EK just posted the link uh, for the downloading place where you can download and it has instructions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, please feel free to uh, download and and try it out. Um, yeah, it's a pretty simple uh, step to install the plugin. Is it usable right now mm -hmm. for UMS people? Yes. This Hopefully. is a trial. Mm -hmm. This right. is a trial. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. That's great. So, you, think, you, so then oh. the, I can advertise this uh, to my colleague? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's as, a, yeah. as a trial, yep. As sure. a trial. <laughs> yeah. How long? Then... How long? <laughs> so the trial, we have the trial till uh, mid-March. So yeah, we would, okay. uh, we we are looking to, uh, we hope to get the feedback by March first. We also okay. have a three question feedback form that EK is oh, going to okay. post on the chat, where we can we are going to collect the feedback from all of you uh, and our students and 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 staff. Uh, get the feedback, then uh, we will decide how to you know whether we um, <laughs> we're going to uh, purchase or not.
-hmm. Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, sorry, I have a suggestion here for the uh, committee members. So uh, personally, I think this is a great thing. It's very useful. And uh, uh, I guess uh, like maybe each of us uh, can maybe just uh, send a quick email to our colleagues in our department and let them know this thing and have them encourage them to maybe uh, try on this uh, function and uh, collect uh, their feedback or comments or anything um, using email, you know, and uh, we can, you know, exchange our uh, emails or the communication here within our committee groups. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is a great thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would prefer to use this. So then, then I can, in my case, I can uh, send the link uh, to uh, my colleague at the College of Management. And yeah, then I'll, them use the and then I'll do the same thing to the survey, my colleagues. Right? Yeah. 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 That would be great. Yeah. Uh, one thing I just wanted to mention, just to confirm with my LSD colleagues, um, mm -hmm. I know that you've done a lot of background work to hook this into our system so that it's accurate. And yet there will be another layer of that that happens if we subscribe, right? There are some that might not, you know, work entirely seamlessly, but then there's uh -huh. a round of, of configuration. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct, Joanne. Uh, so for the trial, it's about 80% uh, functioning now. Uh, so if we purchase it and it will, uh, also, there will be a full implementation. So means there is uh, there is uh, another 20% of resources that will be also functioning uh, mm -hmm. after the full implementation. Right now, it's, um, it's working mostly, but uh, there is still like 10 or 20 percent uh, of resources that may not be working. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Puba, I have a question about uh, regarding this issue. When I see the first uh, uh, part of the uh, demonstration, I was thinking about uh, uh, the VPN. So from at my uh, alma mater, the Georgia State University, they have uh, two VPN. So one VPN is for faculty and the administration. The other VPN is for students only. Mm -hmm. So students uh, using the VPN, then, then they can enjoy the, the initial part of the, the feature of this, this, uh, uh, this software. So Jonathan, our yeah. students, we do not have a VPN for our students. The VPN yeah. service we have today is only for faculty and staff. Oh. I see. Yeah, unfortunately, I think- At this point, okay. At this point, yeah. yeah. They, they do not have the ability to VPN in. Okay. Yeah. And just to think? note that this, wouldn't, this one um, does not require VPN, so right, right, right. Uh, users could Search Google uh, off campus anywhere. Um, okay, that's uh, this is a great <laughs> product. Mm -hmm. It's very innovative. I think. Yeah. Especially nowadays, everyone have to search articles in books. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty I mean, sure. Yeah. All um, do, like we, do we know if it works on um, the Chrome books that we because? Quite a few of our students borrow one or have one. That's a great question. Luisa, you want to uh, take yeah. that one? I have to double check. I know that it works on the Chrome browser um, if it uses uh, for, for the, I think for like, for non-mobile, um, non-Android devices, but I will have to check and get back to you on that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. on a Chromebook, you really cannot download anything. So that's what I was... Are you allowed to, are you able to get extensions on Chrome, on the Chromebook browsers? You can. Yeah, because, yeah, because this is just um, a Chrome extension. Yeah, you can actually look for this, I think in the, like the Chrome extension, um, it's not store, but you can, it's one, one of the extensions one you can of the search options. for. Okay. We, yeah, we, uh, Popo, we can check and then uh, okay. uh, get back to you about that to confirm. Sounds good. Okay. And I think you're presenting this tomorrow, right? On the Academic Technology Committee? Yes, we are actually going to um, present this to the yeah, Academic Technology Committee tomorrow. And it, it occurred, just occurred to me when I was watching this demonstration that um, this also fits in with what the, the, you all, the, the Faculty Library Committee, um, have been encouraging in terms of our getting the word out, you know, and getting the, uh, you know, this is a way to get the word out in that another direction of what the library has to offer. 
people have no idea maybe that we have globe subscription or the access to the um, you know various of these uh, resources. So that is a way of doing that you know as needed basis sort of. So this is a, this company is a startup. They just started right? recently. This um, so really being, right. I I think it's been a few years, and it was acquired by um, uh, Spring Spring no Sage Sage, Sage. I think. Sage. Yeah. and uh, yes, okay. they are. We were told that they are also in the process of uh, signing a contract with a, a couple of other publishers, EBSCO, including EBSCO and the Spring Share. Hmm. Oh, CLC so too. They were going to try, right? Yes. <laughs> It says here, says, says publishing company. Says so a publisher, yeah, <laughs> publishing company. Yeah. Uh, do you have an idea like how many other universities are using this link library? Um, we don't have, I don't have the number off the top of our head, um, but in the link library website, we list all the, um, in, I, yeah, you're doing this uh, drop down, yeah. Um, when you go to the first time selecting the institution, it lists all the institutions who uh, have this. There are about how many <laughs> hundreds? Quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 I saw even from the out, like uh, you know the outside, like outside the United States. Yeah. Like yeah. Like other like you know countries. Like I saw some Chinese, like you know. Taipei, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. MIT, yeah. Like it's, maybe it's international, it's universal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, MIT, Harvard, and Northeastern, they all have this. Deutsch. I'm, I'm, Well, great. Uh, thank you so much. I think we will really appreciate uh, the feedback from all of you. And, and if you can help uh, you know, spread the word and, and then get the feedback yeah, yeah. from your colleagues and other faculty, that would be really uh, appreciated. If you have any questions after this meeting, please feel free to either let Joanne know or email library.systems at umb.edu. We'll be happy to. Um, answer any questions you may have. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.